The recent Saudi-Russian oil deal has ignited a heated debate, with critics pointing fingers at both President Biden and his predecessor, Donald Trump. This agreement, many argue, reflects a failure on the part of the current administration in two key aspects. Firstly, there's the issue of domestic oil production. Biden's energy policies have been a subject of controversy, particularly concerning their impact on the United States' self-reliance in the oil sector has become more susceptible to external influences, exemplified by agreements like the one struck between Saudi Arabia and Russia. Critics argue that by cutting domestic oil production, the U.S. This vulnerability raises questions about the nation's energy security. Another consequence of this situation is the strain it has placed on the United States' relationship with Saudi Arabia. A more robust rapport with the Saudis, it is contended, could have deterred them from entering into this oil deal with Russia. Instead, Biden's less-than-ideal relationship with the Saudi leadership has contributed to the move towards Moscow, suggesting that diplomatic efforts need to be re-evaluated. Furthermore, criticism extends beyond the current administration, as former President Trump and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis are called out for what some term a fake foreign policy concerning the Ukrainian conflict. Their approach of working with Russian President Vladimir Putin to end the war in Ukraine has faced skepticism. Many argue that Putin has shown little interest in cooperating with the United States and instead appears to be using oil production cuts to harm gas prices for American citizens while simultaneously funding the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. The solution, according to some voices, lies in a more robust stance in support of Ukraine. This includes providing Ukraine with the necessary weapons and resources to secure victory in the ongoing conflict and thereby putting Putin in his place. The speaker emphasizes that this approach should not resemble the appeasement some believe was a hallmark of Trump's foreign policy. However, amidst these discussions, there is a pressing concern. A significant portion of the American population, roughly 50 percent, is reportedly opposed to providing further financial support to Ukraine. This opposition raises concerns about the nation's readiness to confront the repercussions of this stance. Some argue that if the United States does not stand firmly with Ukraine, it may inadvertently find itself embroiled in a different conflict, particularly in Taiwan. This perspective views the Saudi-Russian oil deal not just as a bilateral agreement but as a manifestation of a proxy war orchestrated by China. The belief is that China is funneling support to Russia in the conflict with Ukraine, testing whether the United States has the resolve to stand up to these actions. Failure to do so, it is argued, could embolden China to pursue aggressive actions in Taiwan potentially leading to a scenario where American men and women are drawn into a military conflict they would rather avoid. In conclusion, the Saudi-Russian oil deal has raised several critical concerns about U.S. energy policies, diplomatic relations, and foreign policy strategies. It underscores the need for a comprehensive approach that addresses domestic energy security, fosters robust international relationships, and ensures a clear stance in support of allies facing aggression. Failure to do so may have far-reaching consequences for American interests on the global stage.